Congratulations, by the way. I want to start by saying that. Thank you. Um, super duper exciting. Um, yeah. How how are you feeling about it? Are you stoked? Are you nervous? Or what are the emotions right now? I'm stoked. This was completely unexpected, and it's a, a great group of guys, and I just feel lucky to be a part of it. So really, really cool. And I, I actually just, I mean, completely caught us off guard. I just wasn't thinking about this at all. So when I heard about it, it was just amazing where were you when you heard i was in my studio where i am now and i got a text message from their manager and it just had the category and all the people in mm -hmm. it and i was like is this grammys because i knew they came out yeah he was like yeah thank you and i was like this is crazy like that's crazy and it still took me like four four or five hours just to process that's it. Mm -hmm. But it's one of those things, you know, we all work in this business and we're sort of in the weeds. We know what the victories are, and what the defeats are. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get something that you can tell your family about, your friends about. And this is one of those things. So it was really fun to be able to just like celebrate and be excited. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about it. Because I know you've worked across several different genres. Um, from pop and rock and how did you get linked up with um, Under Oath? So yeah I like to uh, switch around a bunch but um, lately I've been focused on band oriented stuff. Okay. Um, they actually reached out to me I think they were talking to another set of producers for this album and the negotiations fell apart and one of the guys in the band Aaron um, brought my name up to their manager their manager randy uh and i are really close so he called me um just to see if i'd be interested and i was like of course mm -hmm. huge fan of the band love to get on the phone with them got on the phone uh the next day and did a conference call and we just have a million and one of the same friends and influences and stuff like that so it's instant chemistry and booked the record and the rest is history so when did when did that process for the for the album start? Like when did you guys start working? Uh, July two thousand seventeen, okay. right after the holiday, and we spent two months. So July and August two thousand. Okay. And did they kind of you know when you got together? Did they have an idea of like what they wanted and what they you know what they wanted to put out, or was it was there more processing that needed to be done? So it was several ideas they had a lot of demos they had all done a bunch of demos on their own and then they had done demos in groups um so really there wasn't like okay we have to make this kind of record or that kind of record it was we have a bunch of material let's go through it and make sense of it um so that's what we spent our first couple of days doing okay. and then all the full-length albums i do uh the first step is pre-production so we did a lot of work in pre-production and actually on my teeth um, was born in pre-production mm -hmm. uh, that was that was written in the studio um, which we gave ourselves the opportunity to do so it was between all the material that they had and sifting through that and then a few new ideas in pre-production um, the album was, was shaped and would you say on my teeth is your favorite song off of the album or do you have one yeah I don't know um I don't really have one. Uh, there, there are so many different sides to the album. Um, you know, there's it, all my teeth is certainly one of my favorite songs of the album, but it would be really difficult to pick. I get pretty <laughs> close to this stuff as we all do, yeah. and you know, the goal is to make a complete album that we all love, and each song sort of, at least on this record, each song has its place mm -hmm. on the album so I kind of look at it like that and and that was really the goal was to to make a cohesive album so that their fans could really um, dive into it as opposed to just a collection of songs and what do you think it is about that song in particular that draws listeners and general fans as well to it yeah I'm not sure I think there's a spontaneity to it it was written very spontaneously it started with the drums mm -hmm. um and I think there's just something like 
angry and, and ferocious about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure if if it's just a visceral sort of energy connection like that. Um, the lyrics are obviously something that I think fans have gravitated towards as well. Um, it's been uh, a little bit more of a controversial song for some members of their audience. Um, Why so? Just the lyrical content mm. is not what their fans were used to hearing from okay. them. And that ended up being, I think, really fun because we released that song first. And they have a lot of fans with a lot of opinions online. And the chatter was very polarized mm. for a second. And I think that was exciting for us. We went into it with the philosophy and, and Spencer from the band really, really sort of articulated this philosophy of if, if you don't take a risk, then all your fans might love it for a month, but then it's just going to disappear. Mm. And the challenge here was let's take some calculated risks and there will be some pushback and right. some people who just don't get it, but because we broke a new ground, it will have some staying power. And, right. you know, we look, that was, that was the goal. That was sort of the calculated effort. And now we look back after a year of radio success and this Grammy nomination and then look ahead to a year of more success with this, with this album cycle. And I think Spencer was right. And you said that late, most recently, you've been working with bands. Is there a reason for that? Is it just kind of your vibe right now, or? Yeah, you know, I'm just lucky, right? <laughs> uh, I get to do this for a living right. and uh, call it a job, which is crazy in and of itself. <laughs> so my whole thing is just to experience everything. But, you know, lately, I've been gravitating towards bands because I like the energy of working with the people who are invested in actually promoting the, the music. So it's, it's exciting for me to hear a singer of a band say, this is never going to work live. Mm-hmm. You know, we, need, we need to do something else. I really like um, being connected at that level, um, whereas in pop, sometimes it's a little bit more writer to writer or producer to writer okay. and we're spending a lot less time with the actual artist mm. um, that's really fun too but lately I've been wanting to be right on the front lines with the people who are making the music with the people who have to live by that music for the next four years of their lives mm. and depend on the product to to so to, to survive so it's been that that's been where I've been at lately Six months from now, could be in a completely different zone. <laughs> um, I just sort of go with the flow and, and uh, am very grateful for the opportunities. Are there any other, you know, memorable, group, memorable groups or songs that, you know, that you've worked with that still to this day kind of like give you chills or get you excited? Um, there's a lot. You know, uh, the first one that popped in my head is a song called Without the Love that I did with Demi Lovato. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, a couple records ago and it's just a great song and she absolutely killed it on vocals her vocals uh, are insane they are believable <laughs> uh it, actually neo from disney was at the session and he he likened her voice to a ferrari <laughs> um he said you know once she gets going it's like a ferrari he just kept saying <laughs> that and i think he's right um yeah. so that was a really special one there's tons i mean i'm 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 proud of most of the stuff that I've done. I, of course, have, like, you know, wake up in the middle of the night wanting to remix half the stuff Mm. that I've put out, and we all have that sort of revisionist um, in us, but uh, I I tend to like a lot of stuff. But that Demi song, that was a really special one. And what are you working on at the moment? So I am working with a band called Have Mercy. Okay. Um, It's an indie rock band on Hopeless Records that Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of work for. And um, it's it's going great. We're about halfway through. Um, we're just cutting vocals and final guitars, and then we'll be more in sort of edit and mix land in the next couple of weeks. So that's that's the current project. And okay. um, I do a record uh, by a band called Tooth Grinder next. Um, okay. They're on Universal Spine Farm. So that starts halfway through February, and I'm excited about that one. 
to. So do you usually work like project to project or not like a couple at one time? I've been through that phase. Mm. I've done that. And Tell that me about that. Hard. What's that like? I mean, it's crazy. It, <laughs> we're, we're all, when we're, when we're creative, we're, we're all trying to get into a zone. Mm-hmm. And so if I have to switch zones, you know, every other day or sometimes two in a day, it can be really, it can really sort of drain my creativity. So I tend to like, you know, six weeks with this band, four weeks with that band, eight weeks with this band, and we can really sort of dig in and, um, and you know, hopefully break new ground. That's, I'm always trying to break new ground. That's like my thing. So yeah. That's, that's what I prefer at the moment. Um, are you going to be attending the Grammys? I'm going. Yeah. yeah and are going. And uh, I, I actually, I live in D.C., so I do okay. a lot of stuff with the Recording Academy. And while nominations were coming out, I was actually preparing to um, to do an event at the ribbon cutting at the new DC office. So I was talking to all the people in the DC office at the same time I was getting this nomination, going like, <laughs> "Oh my god, this is crazy!" Because I wasn't going to go, yeah. and I got closed out of the phone um, uh... the phone tickets. And then I got the, the nomination. I got the news about the Under Earth nomination. And I called Daryl Friedman. And I was like, hey, I, I got to go now. Like, what do I do? And, and he said he would help us. So oh, it's, uh, it's going to be good. I've always told myself I would not go to the Grammys until I was nominated. And, mm. you know, this is, this is uh, that time. So got to go. Got to wear my Chuck Taylors. <laughs> Stuff, you should you should also stop by the Colbat LA office. I'm sure the team would love to, absolutely. You know, say hi. Or, right on. Um, so yeah, but thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Absolutely, thank um, you. And, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to having more of them. Yeah, absolutely. We got our fingers crossed for you. Right on. All right. Well, thanks so much, Courtney. Thank you. Talk soon. You got-